So I know, I know I've made a lot of videos about the new AMD Navi GPUs, and part of that is essentially overcompensation for not having been able to make pretty much any videos about AMD GPUs at all for the past 10 years and not having had access to them. And since I had limited access to these Navi GPUs for the time being, I wanted to, you know, squeeze as much as I could out of it. So hopefully that makes sense. But today I wanted to do a little bit of a deep dive in on AMD Relive, which is AMD's uh, screen recording, game capture, and live streaming software built into, or, you know, that comes with their graphics cards that allows you to use their built-in video encoders for both H.264 and HEVC, which is interesting because they're paying for a license for the for that HEVC capability or negotiating the with the patent people somehow and show what the setup process is, what the features are, and talk a little bit about my performance concerns without trying to harp too much on it because I've already talked about it quite a bit. But first, let's pay some bills. The Mod Mic Wireless can boldly go where no mic has gone before. This microphone can attach to any headphones, requires no additional wires, features very low latency, a dual capsule microphone, 12 hour battery life, and LED indicators on the receiver so you know when you're muted and or when the battery is running low. And you can basically run your entire house without ever losing a signal. What more could you ask for? Learn more by clicking the link in the video description. So I will say to start out that if you're going to set up AMD ReLive, you ideally need to run the Express installer whenever you install your graphics card drivers. I kept doing the custom installer and I'd even tell it to install ReLive during that process and it just wouldn't install it. And then installing it made it not work. And I did some research to NAS around and apparently this is just a known issue and always has been as well as are most of the bugs that I have encountered with this software. And nothing has been done about it. So hopefully with their new renewed interest in fixing all of this stuff, which again, I'm trying not to harp on too much, hopefully this gets cleaned up. But you will have the best experience using the Express installer and the graphics card driver, having that install AMD ReLive. And in my most recent driver install, I did that, and ReLive still wasn't installed, but installing it did make it work. Once installed, you can go to the AMD driver control panel here, the Radeon software, and go ahead and click on the ReLive tab and click Enable ReLive. Once you turn on ReLive, you have all sorts of different options you can change here, including save location for where you actually save your recordings to. I recommend, especially if you're doing the high, a higher bit rate, using a faster hard drive or a solid state drive. That way you can you know, make sure nothing is impacting your recording speed. You can turn on whether you want it to record your desktop or just games that it hooks. Some games like uh, Splitgate Arena Warfare require you to enable desktop recording anyway because it can't hook the game. There's a lot of weirdness with the game hooking. And then you have options for your hotkeys, for turning on the recording toolbar, uh, your recording hotkeys, your instant replay hotkeys. You can save instant GIFs uh, with the hotkeys, which they're trolling with that shortcut because that is Control-Shift-J as if they're calling it GIF. I see, I see that troll. Uh, and then something for in-game replays, which I honestly haven't, I, I've tried to do some looking and I haven't figured out what that is, but you've got hotkeys for everything. Toggling your camera, toggling your microphone, taking a screenshot, toggling specific region recording. You can use this as an all-encompassing game and screen recorder if you get it set up when working well enough, and that's pretty cool. Then you can choose which uh, microphone input or line-in input it captures, whether or not it records your microphone, and then once you enable your microphone, you're given options for volume levels, audio boost, things like that. I just had a basic gaming headset plugged into the green and pink input jacks on the motherboard, and I only had to control the volume slider, not use any microphone boost or anything like that. There is some options for Steam VR streaming. I didn't mess with that because there's a lot to do with that. That that, that, that could be its own video. So I just skipped that tab pretty much. And then you have live streaming and recording tabs. Now, if you are recording, I recommend cranking that bitrate all the way up to 100 megabit per second. It's great that they give you the option to crank it up. And I also recommend using the HEVC encoding type instead of AVC because this is actually a lot better quality and a lot better performing on these graphics cards, on pretty much any AMD graphics card, and will give you the best result. And you always want to start out with the highest quality possible and compress later for YouTube. So crank up the bitrate. Don't try to use anything super low bitrate because they're encoders. Don't hold up super well for that, but for live streaming, it will be using the AVC encoder anyway, because that is required, unfortunately. 
Also in the recording tab you have an option of choosing resolution, either like a downscaled resolution from your screen resolution, so all the way down to like 360p, or to just hook whatever your game is running at, which usually works the best unless you forget to relaunch your game after changing game resolution. You can change your recording frame rates, your audio bit rate, again, crank that up to 320 kilobit per second, and whether or not you want your microphone is recorded to a separate audio track, which will just save out a .m4a audio file separately with your video file so you can edit it and sync it up later. It doesn't do multiple audio tracks in the same file, so you could, could run into some sync issues at certain points, but for the most part, it should be fine, and it's great that they give you this option and make it really easy to access. And then you can choose audio channels. For me, it's automatic or stereo, but theoretically, if you had a virtual surround sound or a surround sound setup, it would actually let you record that, which is kind of cool. Then you have the ability to toggle instant replay, which is a feature of Elgato capture cards and NVIDIA Shadow Play. That's actually part of the shadow recording possibility. This software has it too. You get to choose how long, either in duration or size, because it gives you both of that information you want your replay to be. I usually leave it around five minutes. And then what the actual buffer records to, be that disk storage, which is going to be slower to form the final file and more prone to some issues of the recording just not saving, which is something I run into sometimes. Or it can buffer to RAM, which is what OBS Instant Replay actually does. And this is a a lot faster and snappier but keep in mind that estimated replay size is always going to be writing to your system ram and so you need that system ram always available or you're going to run into some issues uh, so choose that wisely especially on systems with low ram and then you have the ability to turn on an instant gif creator which I can't, t I think it bases the frame, it seems to always be like 10 or 15 frames per second, so that's not always great, but you do get, do get quality settings, high, medium, low, of course, even on the medium setting, the, you know, duration of it, you can change that here as well. The 15 second duration, even at medium quality, is a big enough file in most cases to be too big to embed in something like Discord, but you can tweak that to your desire so you can use instant replay to record like a full game session or a killing spree that you had and then instant gift to record the last five or ten seconds for just a quick funny moment to embed in a website or something up to you and then the in-game replays i believe this needs to be sh supported by specific games for example over on the nvidia side uh player unknowns battlegrounds Plub PUBG, PUBG? <laughs> PUBG supports uh shadow play geforce instant replays and so it's probably a similar feature to that where there's a select set of custom supported games and you have to run with that i just keep it off because i couldn't figure it out and it was another hotkey that could cause problems here now i really like that all of these menus are available and customizable and easy to access and easy to go through in terms of like comparing to nvidia shadow play these this menu system at least in this view is significantly more impressive and more useful than what NVIDIA provides for their Shadow Play software for the GeForce experience. Having it in this style of menu and not just the overlay is way more convenient for me and way more easy to tweak little details for a power user like me. However, they do have a little overlay toolbar that's supposed to appear like Shadow Play's overlay. However, Virtually never can I get it to actually appear over top of a game, which is the point, because it's not only used for Relive, it's also used for Wattman and the other graphics card control software to tweak it while you're in-game, and I can't get it to draw over top of a game at all. I have to go back to the desktop to use it, so at that point, it's pretty much pointless. But the main Radeon settings window is really awesome for this. Next to the recording tab, you do have a scene tab, which is allowing you to set up something basically like OBS, where you can customize where things are located, what things are shown, add your webcam. Unfortunately, I plugged in a Logitech C920, and the result I got from it is really high quality. Like you're looking at it now, the result from it is really nice, but you have no control over the aspect ratio or resolution. It gives you a little controller to like adjust the crop and the size of the webcam, but it stays in the default resolution of the camera, which is typically with these webcams, 640 by 360 or something, which again, looks really great in this instance. And I am actually pretty blown away with how this looks, although it defaults to an 80% opacity. Turn that back up. That's weird. Uh, but it doesn't give you customization. And I tried to install the Logitech Logi Capture software as a workaround because that basically broadcasts the camera as a virtual camera with its own settings applied. But the Radeon settings software still only picked up the camera itself, not the virtual camera. So I can't really figure out a workaround for this at the moment. You can customize whether there's browser sources, your live stream chat from your live stream source. You can supposedly add images and GIFs. I tried adding a couple GIFs and they did not show up on the screen or the recording. So don't know what's happening there. And you can add quite a bit. And I had a really good time messing with this and using it. 
until I actually went to live stream over on the live streaming tab, set it up for ultra quality at 8 megabits per second since their encoder is not super great as I've shown in previous videos, hint hint, and streamed it over to a test Twitch account, and oh boy, that was not a pleasant experience. I was testing with Battalion 1944, and suddenly there was a ton of input latency, and the game was running like crap, and the stream was running like crap. I turned the game onto the lowest settings, and the stream performance picked up a little bit. Quality was still terrible for an 8 megabit per second stream at certain points, but the potential is there. Like, there's some really cool stuff all built in. Like, it has basically OBS built in, but since it is basically OBS, using all of these overlays and drawing over top the screen and things like that, that is a significant amount of GPU load, which your game will also compete with, and you'll have a lot of issues with performance going back and forth here. Another issue is that while it is a good point for a lot of people who have asked me for how to get your Twitch chat over top of your gameplay when you're live streaming with OBS and things like that because they only have one monitor, for one monitor people, that kind of thing is really cool. But it also means that there's a frame buffer drawn over top of your game which will always increase input latency. So that's a concern as well. Performance when you're just doing gameplay for live streaming should be fine, but... Just gameplay live streams are pretty boring, so pick your poison. One major complaint that I have, and sometimes this is an issue, although usually only with desktop capture, with shadow play as well, is that all of the overlays record into the footage. The now recording overlay, the saved instant replay overlay, the stopping recording overlay, the little, hey, I'm capturing your game and here's how long I've been recording timer hotkey, I had to turn all of those off because they kept recording in the actual gameplay recording, which it's not supposed to do. And I'm pretty sure like it's actually not supposed to do that and something's broken, but again, this is one of those things, driving, diving through forums and Reddit posts, this has been an issue for years, and no one's fixed it. No one's even, I don't think, looked at this software for quite some time. And so I, I am making these videos to kind of just get the attention out there, because it, it seems like no one's talking about it. I've I've always had people ask me, like, hey, can you make some tutorials on using the AMD stuff for streaming? Because no one else is. And every time I try to dig into it, everyone's like, no, it's not worth it. Just use X264. And I'm just like, why is this acceptable? And now that I'm diving in further, I'm also asking, why is this acceptable? So I'm really hoping actually dri diving attention to it instead of just ignoring it, which is what we've all done for a few years now, will help get this stuff fixed. Because there is a lot of potential here. And I can see myself wanting to use this as an option for streaming and recording games. And just for recording gameplay, it's really good. Other than the overlays being recorded and other than the inconsistency of it actually hooking your games. And you never know if it's actually working because the toolbar doesn't pop up. You know, there's some issues there and certain hotkeys for this saving recording. I tried to change it to match my... Uh, my shadow play hotkeys and then it stopped working so there, there's some hiccups but there's a lot of potential here and quite a lot of settings you can dive into to really tweak your live stream and your recording with the software so I'm putting this out there as a guide on how to use it so that way you can fine tune it if you balance your game performance and your stream settings and things like that to really get the most out of it and hope that they find a way to fix it up because there is quite a lot of potential here but it's got some performance problems. Thanks so much for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. If you're curious about what I have to say about the encoder as of early July 2019 and all of my other coverage of the AMD launch, go check out the links in the video description and on your screen and yada yada yada. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education. I'm Eples Vox, here to make tech easier and more fun. I'll see you next time.